Andrea, Miss Ladybug, and I'm down at this beautiful park by the creek with my friend Sarah, who works in river conservation. I'm so excited to learn from her today, and I want curious about how you got involved in river work and river conservation. What drew you to the river? Oh my goodness, I have always loved being by the water. When I was little, a little creek right now and we saw lots of little people playing in it earlier. Yep, that would have been me when I was little. And I see you brought some fun things to share with us. I did. And uh, there's one in your hand. Can yep, you show us? I brought a mussel. It's a freshwater mussel. Mussel. Hello. Isn't wow. it beautiful? It is beautiful. It's a freshwater mussel. Mm -hmm. Wow, and it has a really cool shell and there's like ridges on it. In fact, that's what it's called. It's called a fat three ridge because it has one, two, three ridges. Very cool. Wow. So we have big muscles. Wow, that is pretty big. And little, little muscles. Oh, wow. And this one has almost, you can't see it, but it's almost like a silvery, pearly kind of color. Yeah, I think this one has been worn down. I think if you actually found it, while it was still alive, it might be darker, but over time it gets worn down and this is what's left underneath, more like what's inside. Long time, it would take a muscle a long time to get to be this big, like years. Like, like Many three years. years? Like 30 years. 30 years? Yeah, wow. muscles get really old. They're old muscles. Yeah. Wow, yeah. very cool. So the muscle itself was a little animal that lived inside of the shell. And it doesn't look like much. It, it kind of just looks like a muscle. <laughs> like, like, like a muscle in like, my, like in there? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, so it's just like a little muscle. Yeah. Okay. And the shell is what keeps it safe. Feet. It's called feet. It's not like our feet. It's more like a, a part of itself that sticks out the shell and they bury it in the, in the, in the bottom of the stream where they're living. And that helps them to stay put while they want to stay put. And they, uh -huh. But they can let go, and some muscles can even use that foot to move very slowly along the bottom of the stream. I have to write this down. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> muscle can move. move. With their feet. With a foot. They only have one foot. A right. foot? One foot. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? I have to look up a video of maybe I can find a muscle yeah. moving. moving. Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> very nice. Can we? Where can we find a muscle? You could find the mussels in almost any stream. Not, it would be hard to find mussels like this, but not impossible. Uh huh. Uh huh. You just have to look. Um, mussels really like streams that are nice and clear. Clear streams. Clear. Yeah. So, so not really murky. Okay. Not with like lots of you know algae. Not dirty. Not no. Dirty. They like not, clean. They like clean. I clear. like clean water. Me too. So if we yeah. have. Maybe it could, if we see a muscle, it might tell us that the water is clean. Yes. So like a healthy stream or mm -hmm. river would have had muscles. That's it's more likely to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you find good. a stream that has lots of nice, big, healthy muscles like this, it's clean water. Oh, very good. Now we need to know. We want clean water. Is it hard for muscles these days? It is hard for muscles these days. Why is it so hard for them? Well, a lot of our streams are not very clean. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we can't swim in them. No. Or even, you know. A stream that you wouldn't want to swim in or wouldn't want to drink the water. Mussels don't like that either. They can't live there. And there's a lot of streams that are like that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. What, are, what are some things that, um, if we found a mussel, should we pick it up? You can pick it up okay. very briefly. Briefly, you know, briefly. Okay. Less, maybe for less than a minute. Okay, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and and look at it and, and enjoy it. And look at it. Maybe okay. take a picture of it. Okay. Yeah, and then put it back in the water right where you found it. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. We shouldn't Follow. move it somewhere else. Don't move it somewhere else. Don't try to open it. If you try to pry it open, you know, there's a there's a there's a guy living in there. And he'd be very disturbed. Oh, we don't want to disturb. We, and it would hurt the muscle. It would hurt, yeah. Okay, so keep them closed. Keep you can close. look at it yeah. and then put it right back. Put it right back where you found it. Oh, very cool.
No, why do you like oh. mussels so much? <laughs> and and what, what 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 can you tell us some interesting things about mussels? Yeah. Oh, mussels know. are so cool. You might not think so. It might just look like a boring rock that's not doing anything. Oh, no, it's but super cool. Mussels do one of the most amazing things to make more mussels. To make baby mussels. Baby, we're gonna talk right. about baby we're muscles. Talk about making baby muscles. Baby muscles. So babies are cute. Even muscles, I think. <laughs> <laughs> They're very cute. Okay, so, tell us about. It. So here's what they do. Because muscles can't move very far, they depend on fish, like the fish that's on my shirt here, which is a tangerine darter. Ooh, tangerine. they depend on fish to help them move their babies to other places so that they are not all living in the same place. It would get too crowded, right? It's like the fish is a school bus? Kind of like a school bus, <gasps> yeah. Cool. So the way they do that, not all mussels do this, but a lot do, uh -huh. is when it's time for them to spread their babies, uh -huh. they open up and they make what's called a lure, right? Like a fish, like a, if you were, if you were fishing, right? Like, like a, a lure bait. that you would, like bait on a fish hook. They're like, ooh, come and get it. Yeah, so they make a little lure that either looks like an insect or it looks like another fish. Oh. So the fish, this fish, gets attracted to it like, hey, that's somebody I'm interested in. Or, oh, that's something that I might want to eat. Mm -hmm. And they come right up to the muscle right here. And the muscle goes like, Pew! and yeah, and traps the fish in there. Not for very long, and it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't hurt the fish at all. <laughs> and the fish. It also grabs the fish. It grabs the fish. Strong arms that fish. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and the babies get all over the fish on its gills, and they attach onto the gills for a little while. And then the mussel lets the fish go, and the fish swims away because now he's really scared. <laughs> <laughs> the fish is like, ah, I oh, see a mussel got that? me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all covered in baby mussels all over its little gills. Does it hurt the fish? It doesn't hurt the fish. Oh, good. And they only stay for a little while, maybe a couple of weeks at the so like this fish that you have a picture of yeah. is a darter. Yes. It has like little baby mussels all sprinkled all around yeah. it on its little, on its mostly on its gills. On its gills is right. like on the Earth side, trees. which is how it breathes, and they're like hanging out there, kind of like earrings maybe. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got little baby mussels hanging on the side, and yeah. then it swims off. It swims off. And then the mussels, the the baby, baby mussels, they grow they a grow. little bit, not okay. a lot. They don't get huge. They're just growing a little bit and getting stronger. And then eventually, when they're big enough, they they fall off onto the bottom of the stream wherever they are. Uh huh. And they and then they continue their life from then on. And the fish is fine. It's on it's unharmed and it continues. So they just go for a ride. They just go for a ride. They're like, so mama mussels are like, catches a fish. Yep. And then baby mussels get on the fish. And then they go for a ride and they get dropped off in their new home. How cool. Isn't that cool? I'm excited that. about that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> Maybe we can make some baby mussels. That would be fun. Maybe we could make a mama mussel and there's like little baby mussels and then maybe we could have a little fish come mm -hmm. by and we could have a little puppet show about Drive it. In there. Oh my gosh, that would make a great puppet show. <laughs> it would make a fun puppet <laughs> show. Let's go for a ride. Maybe we could have a mussel the cowboy hat on or maybe <laughs> maybe the mama mussel had a little lasso just for fun because the lasso could be like the lure. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, hey, yeah. come on out. Yeah, some of the lures are kind of like that. It looks like a little like a little insect on a on a on a string or on a hook or something. It just kind of swims around like that until oh. the fish gets interested. It's so cool. I saw stories about mussels. I don't know if I have any other fun stories about mussels, but I was thinking a little bit more about when you asked me about, you know, what got me interested and how I used to enjoy spending time in the water and something that I used to do, we called it creaking. Creaking? Creaking. Not like when you're sore. No, no, <laughs> we weren't sore. We had our creaking shoes, so they were like old tennis shoes that we didn't care if they got dirty or wet or ruined or whatever. Uh -huh. And we would just walk up a, the creek uh -huh. and turn over stones. And uh -huh. where I grew up, there were lots of little crayfish in the water. Mm -hmm. Crayfish? Here too. And whenever we found a crayfish, we would catch it like in little cup, you know, and uh -huh. just watch it for a while, swimming around in there with its eyes and its antennae. It was just really cool. Oh, yeah. Creaking. Creaking. Let's go creaking. Maybe we could go creaking sometime. That'd be fun to go creaking with you. You find all kinds of cool things under rocks in the stream. Salamanders. You can turn them over and look, but then put them back. Oh, just like you did with the mussel. Yeah. It was okay to just pick the mussel up, take a look at it, say hello, and then put it right back. Very cool. Yeah. Now I know what to do. 
when I want to see a muscle. Thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Anytime. All right, I'm excited about our project because I think we're going to make some muscles. Muscle. Yeah. All right, bye. Puppet faced on the shell. Using recycled materials, you have bottle cap eyes. And then inside are two bottle caps. And when you go together like this, it kind of makes a fun noise. So let's see what we can do. Now, how to make these things. Now, that part we're gonna do now. Now, what I have here is a piece of cardboard. And depending on how big you want your muscle to be, it could be a smaller muscle or a bigger muscle. This is like a nice size. And um, I'm gonna attach some bottle caps, you can even hear it, to it to make the um, initial form that we can use to make our muscle. Now, I don't know if you can see down here at my table, but I have lots of little pieces of tape. You're gonna need some scotch. You're gonna need some of this kind of tape. And I just cover the edge of my table in the tape so that I can easily put the forms on. So then you want to get some here. I tape them to the cardboard. I already like a little mouse puppet. And you can just tape it on the sides. You can make sure it's really secure and tape it all around the edges and so that it's nice and secure on. Very cool. So the water jug here does the bottom, the water jug. Um, you can even use Tupperware, um, little things like Tupperware, all kinds of things to create that form around your little piece here that makes this fun noise. So let's connect the two. So we're just going to tape, I'm going to tape this onto the top to help make the form. So here I've just taped the pieces on and we already kind of look like a fun shape. That's super fun. Now we're going to make more of the form. And there's different ways you can do that. You can um, cut up strips of cardboard and you can make it bigger and help make that shape. Or you can just start to paper mache some of that form right on here. But I'm going to put a little bit of structure. I'm going to put um, some of this cardboard around the edges and let's see how it looks. Let's check it out. So a really helpful thing to do before you get started is to have some strips of cardboard and you can use these to help make the form or your shell look more like a shell or actually whatever you want it to look like. Right now this definitely looks like dentures or a mouth, right? So what I did here is I just taped a strip of that cardboard to the outer edge and then um, that's why having that tape around your edge of your table is so helpful because you're going to need a lot of tape. Super cool. Now to make this a puppet, I'm going to have a place to slide my finger in it. So all that is is me taking a piece of that cardboard and taping it around the edge of my finger. I have to keep my finger. I want to keep my finger too. But I'm going to tape it like that and make kind of a little mat space that I can slide my finger into. Now I can just slide my finger in. Almost a puppet. Now I attached a few strips to the top to kind of give it this shape that I wanted to get for like a little bit of a bigger shell. So it does look kind of messy right now, but when you add all the paper mache, it starts to look really nice. For paper mache, it could be really simple. I'm already ready to start paper mache this fun shape that we made with like recycling tape. Um, I use a little bit of glue, a little bit of the Elmer's glue that you might have. Um, I just have the em an empty, almost empty bottle. So I put a little water in it and I shake it around and I'm just going to use the very end of it and pour it into this Coke container. See this? The bottom of a Coke bottle, like a big one, and pour that like glue in and it's just, you know, water and a little bit of glue and then you're going to need more recycled material reuse material like newspaper 
So here the inside's already done. And now I'm working on the outside, making sure I leave that space for my finger. So once you coat your whole muscle, you might want to put it in the sun to let it dry, but it definitely needs to completely dry. And then you get to paint it. And you can paint it with all kinds of things. You can just get some acrylic or even tempera or other kinds of paints. Probably not watercolor though. You wanna have something with a little more oomph to it. And then you can paint it and shells come in so many colors. So when you're paper macheing, you do want to go around the edges. Around the edges. I'm gonna go around that edge and around this edge. And you don't have to put very many layers. You could just do one because this is not a structural thing. It's just to make it look cool. Do you have little spots like that that are just like up a little bit? Just make little tiny kind of like band-aids in the paper mache, like little tiny strip. And then you can just go right over those spots with the band-aid to smooth it out. And when you paint it, you won't even know. It'll just be nice and smooth. Here it is drying in the sun so that we can get ready to paint it. So I let my creation dry in the sun and I started painting it, but then I realized there's a couple of spots I wanted to smooth out, but I'm not gonna paper mache anymore. I'm just gonna grab a piece of tape and kind of cover up some of those not so smooth spots and make it a little bit smoother before I paint it. I also made this space to stick my finger for the puppet and um, I'm securing the edges with some tape as well. Now to glue on the eyes, you might need a little piece of um, cardboard and then you just put the cardboard in the back of the eyeball that you might paint. And I use a bottle cap, a little eyeball here. I made a little shine to it. And you take your hot glue and you just put your hot glue right inside. And then you put your cardboard piece, that's just like a little piece right inside. And you kind of push it in I got a little paint on my hand. And um, now that piece is glued in to the um, eyeball. And then you put a piece of glue right on, a little bit of glue right on there. And then you glue it onto your muscle. So here's the muscle with one eye, it's so cute. And here you can see that cardboard that I glued in. And now I have like a surface to attach the eye to the muscle. So like we're gonna put a little bit of glue on there and then we can stick it right on our fun little muscle. And you might have to hold it down for a second. It's just like that. Here is a finished muscle. And you can kind of see I based my painting on this kind of shell and it's purple on the other side. See how it's purple? And so the inside of my muscle is also purple. Ah, nom, nom, nom. <laughs>